O Lord my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. Welcome to Daily Devotions from Crum and Kirk on Monday the 31st of May. I'm Graham MacLeod, one of the elders at Cramond, and it's my privilege to be leading our devotions today, where our theme is going to be a woman's silence. Let us pray. God our Father, as you bring light into darkness and hope to our world, as your Son Jesus brings comforts to those suffering and a full life for all, as the Holy Spirit brings joy to our hearts and everyday miracles of change in our world, we come to worship you and to offer our praise. Amen. Although the number of regular churchgoers in our country may be declining, it remains true that in times of the most intense crisis or personal sadness, people still turn to the church as a place for comfort. Whether that follows a bereavement or an event such as a terrorist attack which shakes our very foundations, we see people unfamiliar with church, believing they can be mended in God, in the company of God's people and in a holy place. It's one of the cruelest ironies of this cruel pandemic that what might have caused people to turn to the church has often prevented them from doing so. In our Bible passage today, we hear the story of a woman suffering the most intense loss imaginable, the sudden death of a longed for son, and turning in her despair to God through the prophet Elisha. Let us hear then the word of God. Our reading today comes from the Old Testament, the second book of Kings, chapter 4, reading verses 17 to 22 and 27 to 37. But the woman became pregnant, and the next year, about that same time, she gave birth to a son, just as Elisha had told her. The child grew, and one day he went out to his father, who was with the reapers. He said to his father, My head, my head! His father told a servant, Carry him to his mother. After the servant had lifted him up and carried him to his mother, the boy sat on her lap until noon. And then he died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, then shut the door and went out. When she reached the man of God at the mountain, she took hold of his feet. Gehazi came over to push her away, but the man of God said, Leave her alone. She's in bitter distress, but the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me why. Did I ask you for a son, my Lord? She said, Didn't I tell you? Don't raise my hopes. Elisha said to Gehazi, tuck your cloak into your belt, take my staff in your hand and run. Don't greet anyone you meet, and if anyone greets you, do not answer. Lay my staff on the boy's face. But the child's mother said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So he got up and followed her. Gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff on the boy's face, but there was no sound or response. So Gehazi went back to meet Elisha and told him, the boy has not awakened. When Elisha reached the house, there was the boy lying dead on his couch. He went in, shut the door on the two of them and prayed to the Lord. Then he got on the bed and lay on the boy, mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, hands to hands. As he stretched himself out on him, the boy's body grew warm. Elisha turned away and walked back and forth in the room and then got onto the bed and stretched out on him once more. The boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Elisha summoned Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite. And he did. When she came, he said, Take your son. She came in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. Then she took her son and went out. Thanks be to God. One of the strangest things about this story of loss is the woman's silence. Like many people living their worst nightmare, she's reluctant to talk about it. She puts her son's body where it's unlikely to be found and doesn't tell her husband why she's going out. She dashes alone to God, seeking out the prophet, not apparently expecting a miracle, but as someone to whom she can safely pour out all her bitterness and distress. It's not just the untimely bereavement. Our personal stories seem unfairly pierced by cruel grief and deep disappointment, circumstances which knock the stuffing out of us and make us doubt who we are or what the purpose is in our living. Like the woman of Shunem, we can take our unspoken anguish to the man of God, who's swift to help, even if sometimes his healing seems to come slowly. And as the people of God, we are called to be there for others, offering God's mending to a needy world. Let us pray. Companion in life and death, your love is steadfast and never ends. Our weeping may linger with night, 
but you give joy in the morning. Touch us with your healing grace that, restored to wholeness, we may live out our calling as your resurrection people. And this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us for evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen.